Welcome to State of Tech. My name is Jared, and I'm sitting here with the Surface Book with Performance Base. This is the latest version that came out in mid to late 2016. Uh, it has improved specs and is definitely a pretty cool device. Um, one thing that I just wanted to talk about from the very beginning is the charging uh, brick. Um, what I like about it is that it's a little bit better than most PC charging bricks that you get. The cable is really nice and soft, so it rolls up nice. It's, um, it doesn't seem to get all tangly, and uh, I, I really did like it. It also has a USB port in it so that you could plug in your phone and charge your phone, which I thought was genius because now you don't have to take up one of those ports on the side of your computer to charge your phone. You just plug it in right here. Genius move, Microsoft. Um, they have their proprietary plug here on the side, which is what plugs into the side of your device uh, using a magnetic connection, which is great. Let me plug in here. And that magnetic connection, I mean, people are doing away with that. I'm not gonna name any names, but I love having that magnetic, um, that magnetic connection there. Uh, Microsoft does have that proprietary plug, uh, which also can be used for a dock which they sell and the dock is great because that dock allows you to uh, Connect many things to it and then just one plug and you're good to go with monitors and external peripherals and all that good stuff So the device itself uh, is a refresh a little bit of a refresh um, The performance base is basically what's mostly new you have a GPU in the base which is your graphics processing power. Um, obviously in the past we had limited graphics processing power within the device itself. The base uh, now has an additional graphics processor as well as more battery. And so it's great because you get the best of both worlds there. You get more graphics performance, which is good. It's not fantastic amount of graphics performance. You're definitely not going to be able to play many games on this, but you can play a few games, especially the less intense games. Uh, for example, I was playing uh, Forza 6 on here. Definitely not a game that's gonna perform too well on this device. I was unable to get anything more than 18 frames per second, even at the uh, slower or the lower resolution. And so 18 FPS was just unusable, could not play the game. I would be driving straight. Next thing I know, I was in the wall. It just was not a great experience. However, I didn't buy it for gaming and I really don't think anybody else should buy it for gaming either. With the performance base, I think what you're looking at is additional performance power so that you can do things like use Adobe Lightroom for editing photos better so that you can use Premiere Pro for editing video and, and be able to get by in some of those applications in a laptop environment like this. Um, and then of course, you know, when you go into a tablet environment, still having the performance base for that additional battery and for the additional uh, graphics processing power. So the pin is fantastic. Uh, you know, Microsoft has done a great job with their, with their pen, their stylus. Um, I had a, a, a previous version of a Microsoft uh, Surface. I had the Surface Pro 4, and I think I had it maybe a little too early. Uh, Adobe hadn't made really many updates to their software yet to be very touch uh, touchy-feely, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, and so it just wasn't a very useful device for me. So I was hesitant the first time around with the Surface Book, but with the performance base upgrade and, you know, I just thought I had to give it a try and see what it was all about. So the device is cool because you can simply detach the tablet from, or detach the screen from the base and then you get a large tablet, a nice large tablet that you can use in pen mode. Uh, with the pen, you can tap on the top and it's gonna open up your Windows Ink workspace. I can then tap and open up uh, different things and I can write and, and do whatever I want and erase. Um, and it's a very nice experience, especially if you are, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say more artistic, but just you like to use a pen. Uh, typing into the keyboard, using the trackpad or a mouse, just you wanna break that monotony and you wanna use a pen. This is definitely a great experience uh, for that. And you know, you can get around, you can open up applications and do all sorts of stuff uh, using the pen or even just the touch interface with your fingertip. 
Uh, so that's pretty cool. You know, I, I really have no gripes there. They really did a great job, not only with this device, but with their Surface Pro 4. It's fantastic as well. Um, what's really cool is that you get a legitimate laptop out of the same package. So I already showed you what it looks like, you know, connected that way. What you can do is rotate your screen around, snap it into place, it latches, and then fold it down and you get a tablet experience with the performance base. Now this does become just as heavy as it would be carrying it around as a laptop, but you're getting that performance base with the extra battery, the extra GPU power, and a touch-enabled tablet, and now you can get into applications like Adobe Lightroom and edit photos, get into Photoshop, use the pen tool. It's not perfect, and if you want me to go into more detail about using a Surface uh, book like this with Adobe Lightroom and talking about Photoshop, head on over to our channel Ditch Auto, which is our photography-based channel, where I talk about using Lightroom with this device. We'll put a link in the description below so that you can check that out. Um, but so far, I found this most useful as a typical laptop and then just having fun with the pen. I'm not uh, marking up documents and doing stuff like that all the time, so the pen doesn't become super useful to me, but it is a fun accessory and I have had fun using it. So in this mode, you definitely have a nice, really powerful tablet that you can use. Um, and then of course, you can get out of this mode simply by re-ejecting your screen rotating it around and docking it back in place. So battery life on this device, I was able with just the tablet itself without the performance base attached, was able to do light internet browsing, drawing, just some you know kind of average computer use for about two hours on a charge. It, uh, the battery that is inside the display here is not really that large and it's not meant to be used for a long period of time and especially not meant to be used for heavy processing like editing photos in Lightroom. That's why they made it so convenient for you to flip the screen around and still have access to the battery. Now, when detached, so I'll go ahead and detach uh, the display again. When detached, you can still plug in your power to the bottom. So we could just plug in our power right here and charge our device. So you don't have to have the performance base with you. You simply can bring this and then be plugged in and be getting that power. So don't worry about that. You're not stuck with that two hour battery life, um, but you definitely get uh, what I found was about up to six, around six or seven hours of battery life when attached to the performance base. Now that's doing light to medium computer usage, browsing the web, you know, responding to emails, stuff like that. If I start to do heavier stuff like using Adobe Lightroom, editing video in Premiere Pro, the battery life is gone within a couple of hours, but that's fairly common with a lot of PCs, not just this particular one. So let's talk about uh, input output. When it's closed, it still has a little bit of that gap here, which you know a lot of people complain about, but hey, it's, it's not a big deal, come on. Uh, well, what we do have is two USB 3 ports on the side. We have an SD card slot, which is great. I wish the SD card slot was in the actual display, uh, but having an SD card slot, it's something people are taking away these days. And as a photographer, I need that SD card slot. Rotated around to the other side, we have our charging port here, and then we have a mini display port. Now, the mini display port bummed me out, and to be honest, it was the main reason I didn't order this device right away. Mini display port is going away. I mean, it's all about USB type C and Thunderbolt 3. That is the future, so why put a mini display port on the side? Now, they probably assumed that most people wouldn't be plugging in an external GPU or something to get more power out of this device because it has an external GPU in the base. But they were wrong when it comes to how I would want to use the device. I would hope that I could plug in an external GPU and really pack this thing with some horsepower for editing video, but it's just not going to be the case. So they went probably with the um, mini display port because that's fairly common connectivity for most of the displays that people have and have had over the last you know five to ten years so 
that's uh, you know that's a good thing I guess, but it also you know an adapter could easily just as done the trick, and they could have put a USB Type C connector on the side. So to me, not super future proof because all things are going to be going USB Type C. Uh, all things are already on the way to going USB Type-C. The keyboard is nice. Uh, the keys have nice travel. There isn't a whole lot of uh, give when you're pushing down on the keyboard. I would say that the keyboard on this performance base here is probably one of my favorite keyboards. Um, I like the key travel when these days computers are getting so thin, you're losing key travel um, and borderline a flat experience tapping on glass. Um, this definitely gives you a nice feel. Uh, it, it, I could type on this for hours and not feel fatigued, and I definitely would enjoy the experience of typing on it. The trackpad is fantastic. It is a glass trackpad, and it still has click capabilities, uh, which is also something that's going away in its competition um, for a more uh, taptic experience, I guess you can call it. Um, what I do like is the uh, ability to four finger swipe between desktops. That's something that doesn't seem to be available on all PCs. I know it's a way that I had my Mac set up when I was on a MacBook Pro. And so four finger swiping between desktops is definitely awesome and I enjoy that. Uh, so using the trackpad has been really good. I use Adobe Lightroom, so I'm using a lot of sliders and making fine movements, and it just really works good and is very responsive. And so I think uh, the I.O. has been really well thought out in this device, um, not only with the stylus, but with the keyboard and the trackpad. So you're definitely not going to go wrong there. Unlocking the device is definitely different. You can use Windows Hello and sign on with a smile, which is something that we saw come to Windows phones where it would use infrared to see your face and unlock by recognizing you. It's definitely something that's pretty neat. It, isn't, it doesn't work perfectly all the time and sometimes is a tad laggy, but typically is just as fast of a sign-in process as I would have had if I had to type in a password. One thing I didn't really expect from this device is good audio. I mean, of course it doesn't have deep bassy audio because of how small of a device it is, but it's actually not too bad. The audio quality that comes out of the speakers is really good, and it gets even better when you have a wall behind you because that sound is able to bounce off the wall and back into your ears, and it is a decent experience. Do you have something to say? So it's not too bad. I can't play music for too long or I'll get in trouble by the YouTubes, but the audio quality coming out of this device is really good. It has a headphone jack on this side right towards the top, which is awkwardly placed if you're using it in a laptop mode, but when you're using it in tablet mode, it's actually placed really well because you're holding the tablet, it comes out the side, it's out of your way. When you are folded over uh, on top of the performance base like I was earlier, the headphone jack comes out of the base, which stays out of the way. So it's a pretty decent positioning, uh, although it's a little weird for it to come out here, I don't think that there could have been any better place for them to put it. Uh, you also have volume rockers on the top here that allows you to adjust the volume. Um, you can do that on the keyboard as well. And then you have a lock screen button. The lock screen button essentially puts your uh, tablet into a sleep mode. What I have noticed is that this particular machine does not go to sleep very fast. If I tap on that button and then fold the laptop closed, I would expect it to go to sleep relatively fast. And the only time that it goes to sleep relatively fast is if I have no applications opened and I do this after a fresh restart. Right now it is still buzzing. It has not gone into sleep mode yet. And the only application that's opened is Adobe Lightroom. It's not running any background processes. It's just sitting there. So it's definitely a device that doesn't seem to go into sleep mode very fast. Even when I go into the start menu and ask it to go into sleep mode, it still takes its time. So I recommend when you put it away, make sure that there's a little bit of a battery charge that you have on it because chances are it's gonna use a little bit of battery going to sleep and with those fans still running, you wouldn't wanna seal it up in your laptop bag right away until those fans stop because it could overheat or cause problems. I've had that happen with laptops in the past. All right, so we opened it up recognized me, hello, signed in already. It was a pretty fast process 
Of course, the laptop wasn't fully asleep, so it was gonna happen a little bit faster. So who's this device for? Well, you know, I thought it would be for me because I was looking for something that maybe didn't have as much power as what my PC in my office would be, but would give me enough power to edit photos, to you do the things that I need to do, and then have the cool features that come around with a stylus and a device that's designed to use a nice stylus like the Surface Book. But I don't really think that it is because it does have that dual core processor, which I don't think is quite powerful enough for what I do these days. Sure, it's powerful enough for web browsing, for using you know Microsoft Office and stuff like that, but for using Lightroom and Photoshop, you're definitely gonna see those applications choke a bit under a dual core processor. 16 gigabytes of RAM is cool. That's uh, kind of the standard right now, but I feel like 32 gigabytes is needed if you're really gonna do much more than just the standard uh, stuff that I talked about prior. Um, I have the 512 gigabyte hard drive in this. You can get up to a terabyte. I think the 512 is probably plenty for a device like this, uh, especially with external storage being so cheap these days. Um, there's really no point in going a terabyte unless you're really gonna use this device for video editing or something like that, or for creating really intense graphical projects that are uh, large in size. So of course there's many use cases that I didn't mention for this device and you really need to just try one. I would recommend not necessarily going out and buying one to try it unless you have a really good return policy with where you buy it from, uh, but you can go and play with these at a Best Buy or a Microsoft store if you have one of those near you. I do recommend that you try it because it is a lot of fun. If this was a device that I was gonna use as maybe a fancy replacement for a tablet, uh, then that would be an excellent reason to keep it. But because I wanted to use it as a main computing device when I'm not at my office and have my more powerful PC, uh, I would need it to have probably a quad core processor. I need it to have a little bit better of a GPU inside of it. And those things just don't exist in the configurations available for the Surface Book. And for the price of the Surface Book, which is pretty high, I think that there are better options out there. Are there better options out there for touch display uh, and tablet mode that you can go into? I don't necessarily know. I think that there'd be a strong argument for whether you would go with this over a, um, a Surface Pro 4, because the Surface Pro 4 is a fantastic device as well, especially with Windows 10 Anniversary Edition on it, um, and some of the applications being more touch friendly these days. Do you need to spend the money to get the premium Surface Book? Really only you would need to do that if you want one device to rule them all and you don't need the horsepower that is needed for gaming or for doing heavy lifting with Photoshop Lightroom and applications like that. So with that said, I've got some links in the description below to where you can check out this device on Amazon and see some more information about it. Recommend that you click those links and give it a look. And subscribe to our channel here on State of Tech if you wanna see more videos like this. I would also love to hear your opinion. Do you have one of these? If you do, what do you use it for? I would love to be enlightened more as to why a person purchased the Surface Book uh, because I think that there are probably some really cool use cases that I would love to know about. Um, and if you have questions that maybe I can answer for you, definitely ask them in the comment section below. Uh, we also have links in our description to that video, uh, the Surface Book video for Lightroom and Photoshop that I talked about. And uh, hey, if there's anything we could do for you, make sure to ask in that comment section below. And we hope to see you here next time on State of Tech. Thanks.